The Permian was a fascinating time in Earth's history. Many strange, unfamiliar animals roamed the lands and oceans, and the period itself had an explosive end that's nearly resulted in the complete extinction of life on Earth. One of these strange animals that existed during the Permian was a Steminosuchus, the crowned crocodile. Now, just from looking at this strange organism, you'd probably be wondering where exactly a Steminosuchus fits in taxonomically. While its name in Greek does mean crowned crocodile, Estemonosuchus and the animals closest to it are part of the clade Dinocephalia. This clade was a diverse one, ranging from massive carnivores like Antiosaurus to docile herbivores such as the bony skulled Tapinocephalus. This group of organisms were among the most basal therapsids, a group that also includes the more derived Anomodontia and Theriodontia, the latter of which includes mammals. Estemonosuchus and its relatives originate from the Wardian stage in the Permian 267 million years ago, with Estemonosuchus living in what is now the Cis-Urals region of Russia, the area where so far all fossils of Estemonosuchus have been found. The radiation of the Dinocephalians, including Estemonosuchus, likely arose after the decline of the abundant Casidae and Sphenacodontidae, from which the clade could then take up the niches left vacant by the extinction of their competitors. From where the remains of these animals have been found, that's being in channel flood deposits, it is likely that a Steminosuchus likely frequented lowland and marshy areas, something that is indicated by its biology. Through the analysation of its shoulder joints, it was found that a Steminosuchus had a sprawling posture, with its front legs splayed outwards. Its back legs, however, are positioned directly under the hips, indicating that a Steminosuchus would have had the capacity for sufficient locomotion. This limb anatomy could offer clues into what a Steminosuchus was feeding on, as this sprawling posture would enable the animal to easily push the front part of its body down to eat plant materials, which fits in with where we know a Steminosuchus lived. The diet of a Steminosuchus, however, has been a contested one, and the conflicting anatomy has led to discussion on what a Steminosuchus would have been eating. A Steminosuchus, for one, had large canines and incisors that seem to indicate a carnivorous diet. This point hasn't held much ground though, as many herbivorous therapsids possess these predatory looking teeth, such as the extreme looking Tiarahudins. More likely is that a Steminosuchus used its canines in intraspecific combat, displaying its formidable maw at the opposition and then using them if needed, similar to how the extant Hippopotamus and Goladas use their formidable canines and incisors. A carnivorous diet is also contradicted by the build of a Steminosuchus, which was heavily built and stocky, likely to incorporate a large digestive system in order to process lower nutrient foods, in this case plants. Generally, herbivores have larger bodies to accommodate a longer and more complex digestive system, as plant matter takes far longer to digest than meat. Going back to the legs, the posture of a Steminosuchus incorporates both an erect and sprawling stance, which is beneficial for a Steminosuchus, as it enables the ability to bend down and more efficiently reach food, a build that suits a herbivorous organism more than that of a carnivorous one, as it would still allow for efficient locomotion when searching for food, while also allowing easier low-level browsing once the food is located. For these reasons, Estemonosuchus is considered by most paleontologists to be herbivorous, although potentially they would have been able to supplement their diets with meat in times of stress. Estemonosuchus was one of the largest known animals of its time, the largest of the two species, that being E. urolensis, being over 4.5 metres long and 450 kilograms in weight, with the more well-known E. mirabilis having a length of around 3 metres and weighing around 220 kilograms. Like other Dinocephalians, Estemonosuchus, due to their more basal place in Therapsida, retain a number of primitive characteristics, including the lack of a secondary palate and small dentary. Considering Estemonosuchus's large size and compact build, it gave the animals a small surface to volume ratio, which suggests it would not gain or lose temperature very quickly, as the low surface area results in the outer tissue layers insulating the inner layers. 
This phenomenon is known as gigantothermy, and increases the base temperature of the animal, giving it a metabolism close to a warm-blooded organism without the usual adaptations that would suggest it was warm-blooded. Interestingly, the integument of a Steminosuchus is also known, which gives paleontologists a better glimpse into how they appeared in the flesh. The paleontologist who described a Steminosuchus, Peter Chudinov, described skin impressions from a specimen. There were no scales present, but instead possessing smooth, glandular skin, similar to that of a frog or hairless mammal. From this, Estemonosuchus may have spent more time in the water than some other therapsids, retaining heat more effectively due to its dense skin, which is supported through both where the animals have been found and how they were built. The most recognisable feature of Estemonosuchus is sure to be its elaborate headgear, which appears somewhat similar to the antlers of moose. These crests are made of solid bone, and project both upward and outwards off of the skull. Like extant deer, Estemonosuchus likely used their ornamentation in the same way, in this case for intraspecific display, sizing each other up and only physically attacking one another when both opponents were evenly matched. Like deer, Estemonosuchus females likely didn't possess these crests and would have been smaller and less aggressive. In terms of predators Estemonosuchus had to contend with, Animals like Eotitanosuchus and Biamosuchus existed in the same region as Estemonosuchus and would have been a formidable threat to them, although they were unlikely to be much of a threat to adult animals given their size and intimidating appearance, though juveniles and weakened animals would have been potential targets. Despite its success, Estemonosuchus and all of the other dinocephalians suddenly died out around 260 million years ago. The reasons for their extinction is not yet clear, although disease, climate change or other environmental stresses may have brought about their extinction. Whatever the case, Estemonosuchus was a fascinating taxon and I hope you enjoyed learning about this topic. More is to come in the future, and if you enjoyed watching this video, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. Until then, I'll see you next time, whenever that may be. See you later!